The renewable energy that's growing fastest is solar, thanks in large part to great technological advances which are driving the cost down. In recent years, the amount of solar power being added to the world's power mix has grown exponentially. All the while, the cost of installing new solar capacity continues to plummet, with it now being the cheapest of any global energy source, including fossil fuels. Well, that vital shift towards greener energy was driven in large part thanks to a breakthrough by an Australian team, including Professor Martin Green and Professor Andrew Blakers, who've just been awarded the Queen's Prize for Engineering by King Charles. And I'm delighted to say they joined me here in the Science Museum. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Uh, first of all, I'll come to you, uh, Martin. What was it you actually did and when? Well, uh, we started our team in the 70s, but the really important work developing the PERC solar cell, that's P-E-R-C, was done in the 80s and 90s. And um, what it actually did was greatly improve the performance of the solar cell. So for a given area of cell, you could get much more power out of it than ever before. So this was the, the, the critical moment in making solar cells, the big step in making them as efficient as they are today. And I gather, Andrew, you were the, you were the bright PhD student in the lab who helped deliver this. Yeah, I spent 10 years at Uni of New South Wales, and it was a very stimulating and productive period and doing a PhD and several postdocs working on high efficiency silicon solar cells. Um, solar cell industry was so small in those days, and we could envisage it becoming large, but it's amazing how large it has actually become. Yeah, and just give us a feeling, how common is your work in the solar cells of today? About 80 or 90 percent of all commercial solar panels are currently PERC solar cells, so this is the, the technology that's driving the current uh, rise, of rise of solar to mitigate climate change. Martin, how does it feel to, to think that this solar revolution, which is really helping to decarbonise the world, is you know, largely down to your work? Yeah, yeah, I guess we didn't imagine it would have quite the same impact that it has, but it was just setting new world records for efficiency, I think was the big motivator at the time. We just pushed onwards and onwards. Many people said the technology was too complex to ever become commercial, but uh, it's been proven that that's not true, and um, the PERC cells have accounted for about 90% of the world's production in 2021 and 2022. And this is a journey we're very much still on. Where do you think we are in our solar journey globally, Andrew? We're just at the cusp of the true solar revolution where almost nobody will build anything except solar with a bit of wind. So solar and wind uh, at current growth rates has the potential to drive all fossil fuels out of the global economy by 2040 or 2050. Really, all fossil fuels? You think it's that potent, or potentially? Yeah, so you clean up electricity and then you use clean electricity to decarbonise transport industry and um, heating. And you can do the whole lot, get rid of all oil, gas and coal. In Australia, we're well on track to do that by uh, 2040 or so. I'm going back a bit, Martin, but did you have any idea at the, at the time of the impact that this would have? We knew solar was going to play um, some role in the future, but we didn't realise it was going to play the dominant role that it now seems destined to play in mitigating climate change. So solar cells, I gather now, are around sort of 20 to 25 percent efficient, as in they use that much of the energy that falls on the, from the sun. Any advances in the pipeline to get them better still? Well, I think we're going to top out at about 26 percent for a pure silicon solar cell. There's a lot of people thinking about making so-called multi-layer, multi-junction solar cells, which can go above 30%, but there are formidable obstacles, and um, that's why I guess they pay scientists and engineers, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed they do. And just as a, as, as a final thought, what was it like, the actual uh, ceremony, meeting King Charles, Martin? Yeah, King Charles was very, obviously very interested in the technology, had some very sensible comments and questions to uh, ask about it, so it was a very, very engaging meeting. Yeah, and, and for you, Andrew? It was um, a very interesting day. Uh, it's not often I go to Buckingham Palace and actually go inside it, <laughs> let alone meet the king.